Today I want to talk about the River Trent. I live in Dorset, the Trent is close on 200 miles away and I first learnt about the Trent in the very late 60s. One of the very first Anglian times that I ever saw was the 1969 National on the Trent. And back in those days when we talked about the Trent at Nottingham, the big match length really was from around about Stoke Weir down through Burton Joyce, the Golden Mile as they call it, Shelford on the other bank down to Gunthorpe Bridge, below Gunthorpe at uh, Caythorpe and uh, Hoveringham and then further down Fiskerton and then down towards Newark, uh, Winthorpe, down onto Holm Marsh and that was about it. Although the tidal was fished down to uh, I think Dunham Bridge that wasn't used in nationals and further up uh, later in the 80s especially when the pollution was cleared up there was a lot of fishing very good fishing up further towards uh, Burton on Trent not to be confused with Burton Joyce and that 1969 national was a very hard match there were a lot of blanks a lot of very low weights and I think it was Roy Else won it with just about nine pounds odd and uh, one or two big names like Kevin Ashurst were well up there with uh, eight pounds odd. Um, one of the less uh, likely lads who I talked to had over seven pounds, although he was sort of in the first 20. So quite a few weights around about seven or eight pounds, but a very hard match. And there was no doubt that the Trent at that time was in, a, in the doldrums. Uh, there was some gudgeon, some roach. There were problems with pollution. But it looked on paper from a distance from 200 miles away like a, a fairly fair match. It's only much more recently in talking to people like John Essex who did a book on the uh, National, on the Nationals, that you realise just how tough and how awful the Trent could be that you'd fish very hard for a pound if you were lucky or a couple of pounds. But I was young and I was naive and I didn't know anything about match fishing really in 1969. If we fast forward a couple of years, 1972, when I started to read the Anglian Times pretty much every week, the Anglis Mail as well, started to see Trent match results. And again, £7, £8, £9 winning names like Pete Warren, John Allerton were starting to uh, frame about that time. and. And the old Trent stars, John Rolfe, Johnny Malt, um, and others that did well, and people like Kevin Ashurst were travelling all the way from Lancashire to fish the Trent, a very long journey for them, Ian Heaps. And on the face of it, again, these matches looked quite fair and even. And by 1972, being 15, starting to catch a few fish on the frome in matches is fairly even trotting catching weights at a sort of nine pound match weight that year and another match at about five pounds and you start um, pleasure fishing we were catching up to about 15 or even 20 pounds a dace and a, a few roach at times as well and you start to think oh that trent sounds good not even seen the river, no real idea of what it looked like, how hard it was, what it would fish like. Come 1976, I'd, I'd started work in 1974 and I was working for, for Barclays Bank, in, actually the Barclays Bank International in Pool, which was soon to become a, a, it was a huge office, but the numbers of people were building up very quickly in 1976. And one day there was a, an advert on a notice board there about anglers interested in fishing the uh, annual Barclays Bank Championship, a team championship. And this particular office I was in would eventually have about 3,000 people, but it was so big it had its own sports region. So this was an inter-regional uh, championship, I think it was districts originally. So. Barclays International Pool became a district in its own right and was entitled to enter teams in the various sports events because it was things like golf and sailing and all the rest of it. 
but that included freshwater angling. And the great thing about this is that it was expenses paid. So we could go up there uh, as long as someone organized it, a team of six and a, a reasonable hotel would be paid for, the petrol would be paid for, maybe even a contribution towards the cost of bait. So I phoned up the person who was uh, sorting this out in pool and it, we just about cobbled together a team of six, two of us, self and Neil, who was the person who uh, put the advert, had a fair bit of uh, match fishing experience. And the other three anglers just did some fishing and that was basically it. So we'd read about the Trent and trotting stick floats and all the rest of it. So in the second week of October 1976, off we went to fish the Trent. Not long before that, there had been a national on the Trent uh, without looking it up. I think it was better fishing than it had been in uh, the late 60s and early 70s, the weights were up a bit. They were starting to get more chub showing. The river, we'd had that long dry summer of 76, but by September the, the rains had broke. I think the National itself was affected by rain, a, a rising river. That was in late September, about um, two and a half weeks before we went up there. and. Uh, the day we were on there, it was still up about, I don't know, six or eight inches, but fining down. And the section they put our match on was Caythorpe and Hoveringham. And uh, I think it was the old Midland AS water. Certainly some of it was. And we got up there on this gorgeous day. Never seen the river. Well, yeah, never seen the river before and there was sort of uh, almost steam coming off the river in a touch of frost gorgeous sunny day for early october and of course the water was warmed by the power stations back in those days and i was quite taken aback by the uh, the pace of the river we'd had a, a quick glimpse the day before we'd got up there on the tuesday afternoon it was sort of four and a half five hour journey to get up there and had a quick look at um down near Stoke Ferry, I suppose, near the famous outfall. And there was a guy who uh, Neil knew there who was fishing a stick float and he was getting the odd fish, the odd gudgeon, one or two roach, not a lot. And I was quite taken aback, like I say, by the pace of it. And he, he had a fairly steady swim close in, then it was faster further out. So when I got to my peg the next day, I looked at it and I thought, God, I can't fish a stick float in this. I, bear in mind, I didn't have the stick float experience that I would get much later on. So I set it set up to fish as I would on the Stour or the, or the uh, Avon or the Froome, which was to fish a sort of 6 BB balsa, shotted right down, and to trot with that. And I did get a few fish on it, one or two roach, one or two little chub like this, one or two I'd say decent roach and I attracted some bleak into the swim so I set up a change tactics to fish for for those with a little tiny trotting float the sort of little things that I used to carry around in those days what did help was about I, th I suppose we started fishing at about 10 o'clock or 10 30 and uh, this was a 200 peg match remember there were over 30 teams of six huge match and this match had been totally dominated by a team from leeds some very good yorkshire anglers um, a, a guy called tony haig who used to fish for bradford city who was a, a very very good angler a very good friend of a, a, someone else called dennis lemon from leeds and he really was a top angler. And in this uh, this particular match, I think he won it a couple of times and been runner up about five times. He was he was forever up there. And up until that year, the match had been fished on weight. It was always fished on weight. 
and this time they decided to change to do it on points so it was on section points so I think it's something like 34 uh, points for winning your section and then 33 for second and all the way down to nothing if you didn't weigh in and Leeds were still favourites and they were so strong there were one or two other teams one or two of the London teams Cambridge were very strong obviously there was a local Nottingham team they were sort of uh, well up there and we were just this coupled together team from Paul who hadn't seen the river I think Neil had fished one of these nationals before on the Trent maybe seen it a couple of times but I'd not seen it so I flogged away and like I say about I suppose about half past 11 about an hour into the match the guy below me and the old Trent pegging wasn't that long probably 14 or 15 yards that's all and on a on a fast river you're in and, and you're down to the next peg and you're back feed he called up to me he said uh, keep an eye on my gear I'm off to the pub and I think there is a pub or there was a pub at Kaythorpe he said oh, I've arranged to meet my mates at half past 11 we're going to go and have a drink he said this is great day off work all paid for and we can go and have a drink he said it's a lovely day though and off he went well that gave me a double length swim and uh, I didn't really take advantage I didn't tear up any trees and like I say very inexperienced my naivety was colossal really but I plugged away with a few bleak uh, on top of the roach and bits and bobs and we got to the end of the match and I weighed in just under two pounds my section was one with just over three pounds with someone who had far more experience than me on the Trent but uh, uh, a London angler who I still see on the uh, fishing forums but when we got back to the uh, headquarters it was clear we hadn't done bad at all I was about 10th or 11th overall and fourth in my section which as I say was one with three pounds Neil had got about two and a half pounds Terry had a pound and a half I think Neil was second or third in his section Terry was about second in his section and the other three although they had very little match fishing experience and, uh, I think one of them had also come fourth in this section well you can see this third and fourth in the section of 34 we're knocking up a massive points total and the other two whilst they they were about tenth or so in the section so we'd hardly dropped many penalty points at all out of I think it could have been um, I think how many were there probably about 31 teams actually 186 was the maximum points we got something like 156 points so we'd only dropped 30 points I think the Nottingham team came runners up they were way behind us about 25 points behind so we'd absolutely walk this match <laughs> no one knew who on earth we were we were just like I say Neil was just about known to a few of them but to turn up as a team for the very first time in a in a big match 180 odd pegs and to do so well was just extraordinary and like I say we were just so naive um, a guy called Dave who was in our team had weighed in a, a pound and a half he just basically caught a chub on ledgering didn't really know how to float fish uh, one angler had been pulled in at the last minute he, he'd come about 10th in his section he, he just was a very casual angler but he'd plugged away and we had been clear at the start that it didn't matter what we caught even if it was a gudgeon weigh it in make sure you weigh in don't give up flog away and weigh in and that's exactly what happened so we definitely put the cat amongst the pigeons now that led to something else when I was about 16 I thought to myself I would encountered one or two good anglers down at Wareham over the years and I thought wouldn't it be good that if I progress in match fishing if within 10 years so I'd be 26 I'd be good enough to fish the national on merit 
I had no idea how I was going to fish in the national because at that time I was a member of Wareham Club who weren't in the NFA. You had to be in a club that was in the NFA to fish the national and they had to enter it. Not all clubs who were in the NFA necessarily entered it. And the only two clubs local to me that entered the national were Christchurch and Ringwood. So I, I didn't see how I when I was 16, just a member of this club. So I thought, well, maybe I'll be joining those clubs when I'm older, when I'm working and we'll get in the team and maybe fish a national one day. And even when I was 16, they were, there were two divisions then they were in division two. Barclays Bank Anglian Club decided to join the NFA with a view to uh, fishing in the national the following year in 1977. And of course their selection was based on results of this match, That's why the, this match had been held on the Trent because the 1977 division three, which was the, the bottom rung that, that Barclays could join was on the Trent again. And uh, so they had to try and pick a team and they asked people in the different areas, suggest people and Neil suggested himself and he suggested me and someone else. And I was, so I was only sort of 19, but I was up and coming, I was keen. I was getting some fair results on the frame as per my previous videos and keen as mustard. So I got picked. Tony Haig couldn't be picked. He was like I say, uh, uh, about two leagues above the rest of us. And he was still fishing for these top teams like Bradford or, or others. And he wasn't really b bothered about going back to Division 3 for Barclays with a what was probably a no-hope team. The team included a fair few northern anglers uh, who did fish the Trent regularly, one or two from Nottingham. And so you would think on paper we'd have a good chance. And those more experienced Trent, Trent anglers shared their experiences saying about the different tactics of how um, at that time bronze maggots were taken over from the caster fishing that had gone previously about not about trying to catch uh, roach, gudgeon, possibly bleak, and maybe even hoping for a chub or two. The month that the National was on 1977. There was a Gladin Masters at North Muscombe, which isn't or wasn't ever in a National, but it's the opposite bank to Hull Marsh. So my mate Phil suggested we go and watch that, which is what we did. And I'll, I'll talk about that match another day. But I was struck by how hard that match was. Um, 40 of the top UK anglers, top English match anglers there, top weight of seven pounds, about four pounds second, three pound third. It doesn't bode that well when you're fishing, <laughs> you've only fished the Trent once. Anyway, come the match, uh, 10 days later, myself and Neil, we were, we all met up on the, uh, the day before, and myself and Neil were assigned to have a walk along as it happened, this Kaythorpe stretch to have a look, see what we could find out. And this is what we did. And we came across some old fellow who was about 75. It's not that far away from what I'm getting towards now. Who was fishing with tears and he lifted his net up and he said, oh, lads, if we told him we were fishing the National the next day, he said, you won't see any roach like this tomorrow. And he had about 12 roach for about 14 pounds of fat, golden, solid roach from um, about 12 ounces to well over a pound. Absolute clonk, as he said, come and match, you won't see these fish. Of course, he was fishing on his own. He's, he hasn't got a 14 yard peg. He's got no one above him, no one below him. Totally quiet and undisturbed. The next day we went and fished the National and I drew on Shelford Shallows where there was a gap. There were 90 teams in that division three so uh, 1080 anglers and there was a split we drew peg 45 and on Shelford Shallows there was a split at peg 45 to 46 because 
it was so shallow on the bit in between a very very long walk i walked 90 pegs to get there so i had half of the section above then half of my section so a whole section's length to get to it and i got to my peg and there was no peg <laughs> i got to 44 and then nothing and uh, i found the steward and uh, he said oh we found your peg it's between 36 and 37 he said that's no good and uh, he said i've got the the peg card here we'll we'll put it in and uh, he walked down about 25 yards below 44 and he said oh is this do you <laughs> i thought yeah that's a generous i got practically no one above me and uh, no one in sight below me for about three fields two or three fields and uh, it was quite shallow it was only about three foot deep close in and about four and a half five foot well out on a waggler my biggest problem is I needed glasses and I couldn't see very well but uh, I struggled along and caught about 100 gudgeon close in and then uh, a couple of roach and a chub of about a pound and I had I had a hook break on me I, I think I was playing a chub again about a pound and the hook just snapped hooks work very good in the mid 70s probably VMC or something or a, a mustad fine wire 20 and they just it would just snap you know it's crazy snap behind the bar but the guy above me was one of the in one of the favorite teams and he fished a, a good match on the waggler he had five pound of roach and i also had five pounds and about an ounce more than him so uh, i was about seventh in the section of 90. that was a, a very good result very pleased with that and uh, from seeing how hard it had been 10 days before it was it was actually a quite enjoyable bit of fishing I had over 100 fish and now and again when I was adjusting the the depth on the waggler that my bait would be down by my feet in six inches of water and I'd lift it up there'd be an absolutely minuscule minnow sized chublet on there tiny little things we got back to the headquarters and I'm pleased as punch really I've caught five pounds I'm in the top ten in the section we all do that we're going to walk the national what a shock that was we had three blanks I couldn't believe it that some of the anglers who fished it for all these decades well, certainly many years had not had a bite um, I think one or two of the other anglers had had a couple of pounds a pound or so but it had turned out to be a right struggle we ended up right smack in the middle we were peg 45 and we were about 45th something like that or 50th and it would be a few years before we uh, finally started to get promotion and things and that, that's a tale for another day the trend as i say that that early days that showed me just how much harder it was to fish than i thought a decade later I went and fished it a couple of times for some short breaks staying near um, Stoke Ferry staying uh, at a and b near the ferry boat inn and uh, I did get to grips far more than I ever did back then but uh, that wasn't match fishing certainly uh, I found that when my when the standard of my fishing went up a lot I started to catch fish and I'd certainly love to fish it again nowadays but that's unlikely to happen but until next time, that's it for now.